Tennessee football, the Johnny Majors Show. Action coverage of the volunteers and other teams in the SEC with the coach of the University of Tennessee, Johnny Majors, and the voice of the balls, John Ward. Presented by the Insurers of Tennessee. When you renew car, home, and business insurance, plan with an insurer. We work for you. By American National Bank, bringing you Teller 24, the leader in day and night speed banking. By the Ford dealers of Tennessee. For the best deal on an efficient new car, your Ford dealer has a better idea for you. And by Miller Brewing Company and Miller Highlight. When it's football time in Tennessee, it's Miller time. Now here's John Ward. The state of Alabama 11 times without a win. Saturday, Tennessee went to Auburn and won. The score? The Volunteers 42, Auburn nothing. Impressive? Impressive. Yes, it was, John. It's as, um, as an impressive a victory as I've been around, I think, uh, period. I don't think I've ever had a football team play more as a unit, and an entire football group with all of its units contributes so much to one victory. You look and analyze the game as it went along and also after it's over and thinking about it on the way back on the plane, there, were, there wasn't one area that didn't do their job. Kickoff coverage and kicking by Duncan were outstanding because Brooks didn't get a chance to touch the ball except once. Our punting under pressure warned did an exceptional job. We handled the punting game. Willie Galt caught the ball effectively. Our passing game, our receivers and quarterbacks, our running game, we had better blocking. Our running backs ran with extremely good second effort and held on to the football. Our defense, what can you say when you shut out a football team like Auburn and hold James Brooks to 36 yards? And we all know who he is because he's certainly made believers of us. I'm sure that Auburn's shocked. Frankly, we're shocked to some degree. Auburn certainly is not a bad football team, and we probably aren't that outstanding. But doggone it, it was a great victory, and I'm extremely proud of our football team and the preparation that our staff put into it like they have before. We've got a great staff to work with. And a more enjoyable group of young men to work with each year at Tennessee. And there were some 9,000 Tennessee fans at Jordan-Hare Stadium, a record crowd, over 72,000 at the expanded stadium. <clears throat> they, too, seemed to be rather jovial when the game was over. Uh, our fans were, yes, because we have the greatest support in the, in the country, period. I'll tell you one thing, and what, it, it makes it all worth what every ball game before the game and pre-game warm-ups from, from about 9.30 on until... The opening whistle, I tell you what, I wonder why I'm in this game. You know, my stomach's turning. I don't have stomach problems, you know. I don't have ulcers, you know, whatever. I guess I create ulcers. But that doggone pre-game jitters, I've had it since I was a high school player, and everybody has it. But it's nothing like it. It's all worthwhile when you sing in the locker room and on the bus ride back to the airport, which took us about an hour, to see those orange folks with their, in their campers and their cars and waving those shakers and hanging out the windows yelling. And I'll tell you what, players telling jokes and coaches happy and everybody's happy. And that's what it's all about. The way we've executed and the joy of victory. There's no substitute for it. There's nothing like it. And we're ready to watch right now as we go with you to Jordan-Hare Stadium where the Volunteers and the Tigers. And there you see the Tri-Captains, Beasley and Stevenson and Big Warren defensive tackle for Auburn. For the Volunteers, Alan Duncan, number 10, 78, Irwin. And that will be... Danny Spradlin, Danny number Spradlin. 50. Mirable in uh, Africa and Knoxville. All right, and here come the volunteers led by Coach Johnny Majors, who seems to be a bit excited. I was excited. I tell you what, I had a very good feeling about this game. I didn't, under, I didn't overestimate our chances. I underestimate Auburn. I thought it was going to be a real tough dogfight. But I had a feeling about this game when I told our squad that I thought that we were going to be ready to play our best ball game. Uh, this is really debris, as you can see, the oranges thrown at us. Uh, which is, there's no place for that, and I, I, I keep encouraging our fans and supporters to always act like winners and, and, and treat the opponents with respect. I'll say this for Doug Barfield. Doug Barfield, the head coach, went over to the student body and, and asked him to refrain from that. I think that the Auburn people, the athletic director and head coach, all tried to prevent that by taking more precautions, uh, security precautions and whatever, and uh, we want to keep trying to make it a better game for the players to play. Tennessee's got that football. First down, 10 to go at the 20-yard line. Jeff Olszewski, the quarterback. Running backs, as you see in the I formation, Barry and Daniels. This is Olszewski first on play, first down. The only really bad throw that we had, almost intercepted. What a way to start the ball game. Fortunately, it was dropped, 
Uh, the weak side linebacker played it very, very well. I don't know how he smelled it, but he smelled it and got out there. Another good play by Auburn. They got Terry Daniels for a very, very small gain of about one yard. That was Howell making the stop for the Tigers. It's nothing to nothing. Third down nine. Oshevsky. And another good lick. But Jeff keeps his balance. Uh, second effort. Makes about a yard more than what he would have if the first man had stopped him. But we have to put on and our first uh, possession. possession. That's right. Possession. Now, <laughs> to put yeah, it's going to be John position. Warren. And the punt is away by Warren. His only mediocre kick of the day. And fortunately, he got a Tennessee roll. The ball rolled approximately 15 yards, and we have decent field position. Auburn getting the ball on the 31-yard line. First down and 10 to go. Auburn will be opening with Charles Thomas at quarterback number 12. 21 is Brooks, 22 Peoples, the running backs. John, as you know, good pursuit and a good tackle by Danny Spradlin. Watch out there. Second man up was almost a little bit late. If he's down, you cannot put your head on him. Gain of four, second shuffle. and six. We had one call on that during the ball game. <clears throat> Second man up. At least Danny, you know, that's uh, that, that is uh, Bolton, Bolton was there, 61. Thomas Chris carries Bolton. on the keeper. Third mm. and one. No score, first period. We played a lot of people in the ball game, John. We played more people than I think I've ever played as a head football coach. We jump off sides here. Our nose men and left tackle. The whistle was blown. Greg Gaines containing Brooks there. He might have made a big gain, but we were off sides. The whistle was blown before the play was initiated. They get the first down and now they have better field position on their own 45. First down 10, mm -hmm. Auburn wearing the blue jerseys with white numerals, Tennessee in white jerseys and orange numerals. And back to throw, this will be Thomas. He slips and falls and loses seven yards. We had a better pass for us Saturday. That's something that had been concerning me and our defensive staff. Our coaches did a tremendous job preparing our football team, and our team executed the plan as perfectly as it possibly could have. This is Thomas. Back get your to hands throw. up. Get your hands up. Get your hands up. Ah, in this tackle. Uh, couple of, uh, that's about the worst looking tackle I believe we did all day. And I believe he scrambles for close to the first down. He gained 11 yards on the play, but it will be third and seven because, of course, on the previous play, Auburn had lost eight yards. Third and seven at the 48. Nothing to nothing the score. And now Auburn has made a first down, overcome a penalty, at least half of it. The pass Get your hands complete. up. No, no, we've got to improve that. That's a fine tackle. There. Wilbert Jones up Wilbert against Jones. Brooks. It appears that Wilbert played a better ball game. Wilbert has been not up to par physically last week, but I believe he had a good week of practice and played well, it looks like. Uh, we stopped him, though, right? Fourth stopped and one. Stopped him, and here's Bollinger to punt. This and is, it's a fine punt. High, and they're covering it well, and it will be down, as you see, right there at the 11-yard line. Tennessee yeah. backed up deep. That's an Auburn bounce. We had a Tennessee bounce on our first punt. It was part of Auburn bounce and helped him right here. It didn't go in the end zone. And I think we may put together a pretty decent drive. We're starting on our own 11, 89 yards away from the goal post. And fine play by Auburn's defense. Hand off to Barry, uh, gain of a yard. Riley and Warren on the stop, second and nine. O'Shea. Sprint draw. Uh huh. Not much again. Our block is starting off fairly moderate or below moderate at best. Third Say and poor. six. Third down six. Big play. Jeff Oshetsky to James Berry. And James Berry is certainly becoming a fine football player. He's a winner on the field, off the field, a young man with excellent character and highly intelligent. He's tough. He holds on the ball. So we're out of the hole right now. First down 10 at the 26-yard line. Nothing to nothing, first period. Tennessee and Auburn, the volunteers out, with the ball. Out of the deep hole, of course, our field position is still very, very poor on our own 25. Terry Daniels picking up about four. Gain of four, second and six, knocked down by Martin. We try to prepare our football team that we thought the first five minutes would be a big key in the ball game, setting the tempo. You and I talked about that in our pregame radio show. Down at Auburn, I felt like that was a must. Oshevsky, long pass downfield. It is incomplete. Underthrown. Uh, Mike Miller had the cornerback beaten. It was a good call. Our play calling was excellent. It was a good call. Jeff kind of short-armed it, but Mike made a good effort. Coming to the left side, Oshevsky pumps complete. Barry. Great. The same play that we threw the other time for the first down to the right. Now, we put together two first downs back to back, and also we're getting out of the shadows of our own goal post, and now you can open up a little bit more, a little more freedom with your offense. Hopefully, we'll put together a few more first downs on this drive. Let's Terry see. Daniels. Oh! Good running. Terry runs with a fine body lean. He's only about 178 pounds, but I'm about a young man with character and intelligence. He and J.B. Berry are roommates. Now, both those young men are fine students and great youngsters. 
Terry Daniels will give you an effort, I'll tell you. And he's a, he has good. Uh, good stick there by Wood and Skutak. No gain on the play as Daniels carries, and it will be third down one. And like most running backs, when there's not much daylight, you can't do uh, much with your abilities. So Tennessee to the line. They have the ball at the Auburn 45 yard line. And a power set. Auburn's in the short yard of defense. And good hold. Good blocking. Fine second of it. Gary is not that big either. He's about 184 pounds. But he has good, strong legs and runs with a good lean also. He came into the game with a slightly injured foot, had not really worked that much. That time he picked up the first down and 10 at the 34 yard line of Auburn. Nothing really? and nothing to score. Good. He's played sparingly. Now, that's not very good there. The, the fullback got whipped. Left side of our line and good play by Skutek and Auburn's defensive right side. Second down 10 as Ford carried that time. <laughs> Olszewski to pass. He's looking. He's passing. Oh, a big kick. Reggie Hopper, welcome back to <laughs> the fold, Reggie. Caught the ball on his back, falling backwards, and uh, that took good concentration. It was a good throw, uh, fairly low, but uh, Reggie made a fine catch there. First and 10, Tennessee at the Auburn 20. Nothing to nothing to score. This drive beginning back at Tennessee's 11-yard line. Olszewski. Ooh, a little bit shaky right there. A little Armstrong. Bigger. Armstrong. Good second effort, Carlton. Picks up about three. Uh, only two throws that Jeff had a little trouble with was the first one of the game and that one right there. It was completion, but that defensive end was a little bit close. Other than that, I believe Jeff was on key about as well as you could expect a quarterback to be Saturday. Second down seven. This is oh, Ford. Yeah. Ten. Spinning. Five. Four to the three-yard line. Running less good running. It's one of the things better runs um, probably his best of the day. But if they had a little bit more body lean, he's really worked on that, uh, the body lean, protecting the ball, and he ran with good confidence there. So Tennessee's got it first down and goal to go. Oh, good block by the uh, power back, Harlan Armstrong. Goes to about the half-yard line. Uh, that was Daniels, Armstrong, blocking for Barry. So it's got to be second and goal. Oshesky sneaks. Next. Touchdown, Tennessee. We might add on the power play, they ran over and behind Jay Williams. From Nashville, David Lipscomb from high school, and also Bill Marin, a left guard, and our tight end, Reggie Hopper. So Tennessee leads Auburn by a score of six to nothing. There you see Olszewski. Here's Alan Duncan with John Warren to hold. The extra point is up. The extra point is good. And Tennessee leads Auburn by a score of seven to nothing. And the Volunteers with 344 to go will be kicking off. And here, the kicking game plays such an important part. Well, we've talked about the kicking game. We have a very fine punter in our place, uh, Warren and Duncan. Now, Duncan has been more consistent than Warren so far, but uh, Warren had a fine day Saturday. Here's where it comes in. We felt like we had to win the kicking game because we had two experienced kickers. And there's that Auburn. Bounced back. Auburn didn't quite know what to do. Uh, I don't know how the, the ball must have hit short of the goal line and took a backward Tennessee bounce. If it bounced into the end zone, it's an automatic touchback. Ball comes out to the 20. Now, we have great field position, and our defense does something better than we've done in the past. We wrap our backs and hold Auburn backed up. This is crucial to knock them, well, to stop them right here and to get the ball back at midfield. Again, it's Thomas. This time the tackle by Spradlin. Spradlin. Jackson was there on the first tackle. Now it's Spradlin. And it's third down eight at the four. That's as good a situation as you can be in. Third and eight backed up inside their four-yard line. Their offense has to be limited. I'll tell you what, that's a fine tackle. Two Castile people. was there for one. Two fine tackles. And it will be fourth and four. And here is Bollinger to punt from his own end zone. Gets the punt away. It's high. And this is Willie Galt, as you see, signaling for the fair catch, which he makes. Oh, oh very unusual. It, it, uh, there's not call there. You know, uh, fair catch, and Willie fell as he caught the ball. And might have been a little bit late hit there. As it is, Tennessee at the 46, and here's the pass, and there's the catch. Oh, yeah. And with it, Willie Galt, maybe Hancock, I think. It was Hancock, 28, who makes the reception good of the pass. Good protection, John, and a good job of Jeff showing poise in the pocket, and Hancock came back to the play. And Auburn was penalized after the play for defensive holding, which is tacked on to the completed pass. So it's got to be first and 10, Tennessee at the 21-yard line. That's a very critical penalty. Oh, Auburn did a good job there. They stopped the play, almost tackled the ball out of Beers. Grasp. Olszewski looking. There's the pass. Good scramble. Complete. Willie Galt. Good, great, good scramble. You threw it away from the defender down low and Galt makes a good effort. Willie Galt, as well as our other receivers, have made tremendous progress in spring practice. I wasn't too pleased with their progress. Feel like they had their mind too much on track. Well, I'll tell you what, they've come back, all of them. 
and uh, showing more maturity. More here's toughness. the full house, and here's Barry, and there's the first down. Is Tennessee it? with the first down as the first period comes to a close. John Key situation is third down and goal line. Our offensive football team has picked up the tempo the last two or three weeks, and that's important to make those third and short situations to maintain your drive and maintain your confidence. You have to be tough and suck it up there and get the job done. At the end of the first period, the score is Tennessee 7, Auburn nothing. The second quarter coming up in just one minute. Period of Tennessee Auburn at, Cl at Jordan Hare Stadium, ready to get underway, and we're ready to go right back to the action for you. As Tennessee will have the football, of course, the Volunteers lead seven to nothing. There, they're huddling. It'll be first down and ten to go at just outside the ten yard line. Tennessee could make a first down without uh, scoring. We're on the move, John. You know, we have not stopped ourselves. We haven't uh, had any penalties. Uh, we've held on to the football. The things that a football team is supposed to do to be successful. Oshevsky. Oh yeah. Good spammel with Jeff here. Had a good fake inside. And Jeff gets some fine yardage by executing well. And he had a good body lean. He tucked the ball away when he got hit. So it's a gain on the play of six down to the four yard line. And it's going to be second down and four to go. Tennessee leading seven to nothing. Barry. Good fighting. second effort. Good second effort. He hadn't stopped yet. <laughs> How about that? You know, good blocking. I'll tell you one thing. That young man, the 184 pounder, certainly runs with some good authority. James Berry scores and Tennessee leads 13 to nothing. There you see him heading toward the bench after scoring the first of what will be three touchdowns you know, in the football John, game. Uh, we talked to our team and this is Alan Duncan kicking John Warren holding 13 to nothing. It's right through the uprights. Uh, Alan Duncan has that great percentage on his extra points. You know he's gone for many, many. I should know it without missing. He's missed none this year and I should know also. But it's been a long string for Alan Duncan. He's kicking off. And he did, he's doing a tremendous job yeah, kicking off. Our kickoff coverage has done well. Frank Emanuel's in charge of our defensive kicking game. We spend a lot of time on the kicking game. Uh, we have some coaches who believe in it, and certainly I believe in it. You know, uh, my father taught me something about the kicking game when I was a kid. And of course, Neyland and Robinson and White certainly believed in the kicking game. People that I came up under Tennessee, and I'm pleased I have a staff that believes in it too. Tennessee leads 14 to nothing. Auburn with the football. Ooh, pretty good running there. That's had Peoples. Had him stopped in the backfield, Danny. Danny Spellin made some good plays. It's good to have him back full speed. But Peoples is a big, strong guy, about 205 pounds. So it's a gain of four. Second down, six at the 24-yard line. Thomas. Brooks. Fine hit. That's, uh, that's uh, Danny Martin and Chris Bolton. Two fine seniors. Uh, Danny from McMinnville, Tennessee, and Chris from Atlanta, Georgia. Third down, three. Auburn. Get to him now. Get to Brooks. I'll tell you one thing, but, well, that's again. I think Chris probably remember two years ago at Birmingham when uh, James Brooks and Auburn really humili humiliated us 29 to 10. And our football team has come a long way, John, since that time. Now, we haven't accomplished our mission, but we are making progress. Keeping it this time is Thomas sliding forward for a gain of six out to the 40-yard line. Auburn trailing by 14 to nothing, moving with that football. Anytime you have a back like Brooks, you're, you have a threat. And their offensive line had impressed me before the game. Fine tackling. I see Brad White, Bill Bates, Chris Bolton again under the play. And probably another one or two. You like that direct handoff, five people around the ball. Auburn, however, has another first down at second. There's Bill Bates creeping up there from Farragut High School. He backs up. You know. Thomas pass. Incomplete. Intended for Franklin. Decent rush that time. And I saw one of our defenders that looked like uh, uh, Chris Wamper from Lenore City. Uh, fine young man from down that part of the country, the great family, put his hands up. Carrying the ball this time, Thomas on the keeper and sliding in to make the tackle on him, Castile and Spratlin. Speaking, speaking of uh, East Tennessee, Castile and Spratlin from Maryville, Tennessee. This is Thomas again. Well, get your hands up, folks. That's a baby. All right. And then Mike Coker and, uh, and Brad White. That's who it was. Yes, Minus sir. seven back to the 40 on the sack, oh, and man. it will be fourth and 14. Mike Coker from Rue High, East Tennessee, and... and, and Brad White, oh man, would you not have a bunch of folks like that? He is the greatest guy. Galt asking and for, making the fair catch at the 13-yard line. You're fighting a battle, or you're fighting a war, or you're playing football, or whatever you were doing, brother. I'd want him on my side. He's got that mean look in his face, but he's a real fine gentleman. Off the field. Stumbling forward, Daniels for seven yards to the 20, blocking up the middle. Baloo there on the stop, second and three. Keep your feet there, Terry. Terry's running hard, good angle. But keep your feet up a little bit more, big man. Mrs. Daniels got a yard. Westbrook there. You'd be a 178 pounder. I'd like to have some more like you too. I'll go to battle with you. Third down, two yards to go at the 21. Tennessee leading 14 to nothing in the first half of the game. At Auburn. 
Auburn in the four-man front. A little battle with a guy like that, Tim Irwin, in there, too. That's where they hit it. Irwin's a right tackle as one of our fine students. Excellent football player, an All-American type player. Third down try, Tennessee converts once more. It's first and 10 at the 24-yard line. Moving the ball again. Quick bootleg pass to Hancock. Now get up, Anthony. Don't, stay, don't straighten up. Get what you can and tuck that shoulder and helmet and get you another yard. Seven yards on the pass to Anthony Hancock. Second and three at the 31. All you young men watching these uh, films now, when you get ready to be hit, lean like that uh, back right there did. Lean because you protect yourself more. You get nothing but a helmet and shoulder pass to hit, plus you protect the football. Third down one after the two-yard game. Your body is most important, and the football is most important. And that time, Daniels picks up two, and it's first and ten at the 35-yard line. The Pasadena crowd, the largest crowd in Auburn history. Third largest college stadium in the Southeastern Conference. Well, that's four. Dumped for a loss of a yard by Blackard. Our draw play did not work too well. Uh, they stuffed it about three times, but quite often that will... It, 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 it'll either be open or it'll keep the pass rush off of, off of it somewhat. Pass intended for Harper is incomplete. There's a penalty marker down on the play. Interference, I believe, on Auburn. Big break for us. That was Tim Irwin. I don't want to see guys like that leave you. At the end of the I want to try to enjoy them while we can. Penalty against Auburn. Pass interference. First and 10 Tennessee at the volunteer 47-yard line. Leading 14 to nothing. Good cut, Terry. The play was designed in an off tackle. They stuffed it a little bit there, but Terry had the quickness to bounce outside, and that's what a good running back does. He runs for daylight. Second mm. down three. Daniels this time popping up the middle for a couple runs into yes. big Frank Warren. Well, you know, there were pretty tough defensive play right there, but Terry got all he could get, really. It's a little short of the first down. You see the referee, Robert Allier, marking in there, sneaking for the first down. I don't like those situations. You know, if we hadn't made it there fourth and a foot, what do you do? Put it on fourth down or do you try to sneak it again? Look up in the stands. That's right. They all know how to make the answers. Back to throw Olszewski. The pass is complete. Oh, yeah. to Mike Miller. We, we played more young people, John. That was good for us, good protection. Don't forget the line. And they're holding those people after the quarterback, but Jeff's executing very well. Mike Miller ran a fine outcut. Barry. Mm. One guy got him in the arm, picked up about three. That's right. Second down and seven at the Auburn 25. This drive began with 10.42 to go, and now 4.53. Pass. Yes. The Hancock. All right. Yeah, that's more like it, Anthony. You see, he juked a couple times, then when he saw he couldn't get anybody, he took the outside. That's more like it. Anthony Hancock, 11 yards down to the 14-yard line. I think he was listening to me on his TV show telling me that field. <laughs> Back to the I formation, Tennessee. Quarterback. Ooh. Fell forward, though. Got three on the play. And so it's going to be second and seven, and Tennessee has the tight end, Harper, slotting just a little bit wide to the left. Yeah, we flexed our end. We call it a flex. Uh, Big play. Flexing quite a bit. Pass. Harper. Oh, super kick. Somebody said at the game, they were Coach Brady's probably wouldn't like it because they caught it one-handed. As long as they score when they catch it one hand, I'll go along with it. Reggie Harper from Hartsville, Tennessee, with a touchdown catch. And Tennessee leads by a score of 20 to nothing. Great pitch. Jeff did a fine job finding the open city with a kind of flood pattern with several people in one zone. And Reggie really made a superb catch. Back is Duncan, trying for his third straight in the ball game. John, you know, you ninth been straight of the year. All right. It's up, and it is good. You know, you've been around me a long time, and if people listen to me on TV and whatever, you know, I'm not anybody to make excuses, but be innocent. You know what would happen with Brian Ingram and the five minutes in, in the for the first two or three weeks, you know? Makes a big difference. But we've closed ranks, and we've got a lot of young folks trying to get better. Tennessee goes 87 yards in 15 plays, six minutes, 37 seconds in that drive. We've had quite a bit of adversity to start the season, the most I've ever had this early, or we've had. A dog on it, we're fighting. Here's the kickoff. Get to him, get to him. Picked up by the up back right. coffee. Who made that play? I believe that's Chevette that Suttle. That's exactly who it was. Chevette Suttle, and maybe, uh, I don't know who the second man was. Up, oh, stay on sides. We jumped off sides, now it's first and five for Auburn. Don't give them anything, make them work for it. First down five, ball moved out to the 26 yard line. Jimmy Noonan and offside. Jimmy has done such a better job, uh, and Frank Emanuel working with our defensive front. Uh, of discipline himself. Uh, Jimmy used to jump off sides a lot. He's such an aggressive youngster. Danny Spradlin, fine play. That's Brooks carrying. Got two to the 28. It'll be second and three. Jimmy just can't wait. He's got to get there early, but, you know, <laughs> occasionally you can't go to the ball snap. Good There's play. Noonan on the stop. Uh, Wilbur Jones, the first man, too. Wilbur, 
went underneath the pile, and Jimmy Noonan was the second man up. Third down, one at the 30. Hey, West Tennessee, well represented there. Noonan from Dyersburg and uh, Wilbert from Brownsville. West Tennessee, East Tennessee, Middle Tennessee. Here's the big third down play. Thomas trying for the first down. All right. Stay, keep your legs. Keep your legs. All right. Mm, lock it, lock it, lock it. Who's the first man on that down? I think Castile. I'm not sure. Is the unstacked? Could have been Martin who came yeah, up there. The Studaway's on. underneath there. Studaway could have been. <coughs> right now, gentlemen, we're playing five people across the front. We're either freshmen and sophomores with our young people. Here's the punt by Bollinger. And. There's Willie Gall good making job. the fair catch under pressure at the 30-yard line. Willie's doing, a, doing an excellent job handling the punch. He's in good judgment. He has good hands. He likes to do it. He has fine speed. He's a threat back there. Tennessee has it first down, 10 to go, leading 21 to nothing, nearing the end of the first half. This is Terry Daniels. Oh, yeah. Oh, stay up. Front for it. What's this? A serious thing. Front down to it. One thing, Arbor's punter did a tremendous job kicking the ball high. We could not return a single punt because he kicked it so high and didn't overkick his coverage. First and 10 after a 16-yard gallop by Daniels. Olszewski, the quarterback. Olszewski. Protect. Uh, don't get back too deep, deep back. Willie Galt made a fine adjustment coming back to the ball. Couldn't feel that, Willie. That's where to go. 37 yards, Olszewski to Galt. Willie was interfered with, but he had fine concentration. The ball was a little bit underthrown. He came back to the ball. He got as much as he could, and when he got ready to be tackled, he leaned and tucked the ball away. First down 10 at the 17-yard line of Auburn. Tennessee leading by a score of 21 to nothing. Olszewski. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ah, cut back there. He's a tough little guy. That's Terry Daniels. He's going for 14 going yards for the down line, to the like, three. Like we talk about north and south. There may be a little bit of a give and go there. He might have walked in on the left side, but that was fine running. He was going toward that end zone. Good blocking. Tim Irvin. Uh, it was Tim Irvin right tackle, Dwight Wilson sophomore right guard, and Reggie Harper tied in blocking. And the fullback was James Berry, of course. Now it's Berry standing as the tailback in the full house, and this is Berry. How do we call it Armstrong? But he battles and he scores. Well, call it Armstrong, little guy, five feet nine, 195 pounds. He took the linebacker and knocked it back in there. And the same side of our line, the right side, which I just mentioned, blocked well, and Berry, his second effort was very good. On short yardage and goal line. Tennessee leads 27 to nothing, and it will be Duncan again to attempt the extra point with Warren to hold as the Volunteers have opened up the lead and the extra point is up, and the extra point by Duncan is good. And so Tennessee leads at the end of the first half by a score of 28 to nothing. We'll be talking with Coach Majors in just one minute. John, one good thing about the ball game, and, and so far this year, we've played more young people and more people than I've ever played as a head football coach. In the first half early, we played not only Castile and Cooper, who are sophomores, on our front five. We also played Charles Morgan, who's a freshman in, Reggie White, freshman tackle a lot, Jackson, a freshman nose man, and stood away a sophomore tackle. We were playing more people than ever. We hope that bodes good for the future. Uh, well, we've got to take each game at a time. We'll be talking more about this football game in just one minute. It's Auburn by a score of 28 to nothing at halftime. We'll see the second half after this brief pause for station identification. Tennessee leads Auburn as the second half gets underway. Auburn has the option, and the Tigers elect to receive, and so Alan Duncan will be kicking off. Here to describe it for you again, the coach of the Volunteers, Johnny Mays. I think this is going to be a fine kick. It's low, unusual. Well, it's a uh, fine kick because Brooks didn't get it. It wasn't that good a kick. <laughs> but anytime Brooks doesn't hit it, I'd say it's a fine kick. So, Alan Duncan, I still like you. And at quarterback now will, will be for Auburn, Joe Sullivan. I'll replacing you, Thomas. Duncan's a great youngster. My gosh, you know, we've got some fine young men. I've really enjoyed being around. Not because we beat Auburn. But I've said this before the season started. Every week, I enjoy this squad more. I'll tell you one thing. We've got a few more fighters. Sullivan to pass. All right. Intercepted. Castile. Castile. Mike, Mike Castile and Coach Judy's worked a little bit harder on that this week. They were in a better position. They spent some time on it. And made the defensive squad happier, too. So Castile picks off Sullivan's pass at the 41-yard line. Tennessee back on offense. Yeah. A good... Uh, Great way to start the second half. Sweet play. Daniels. Oh, yeah, almost all the way. Block play. As we see, we're trying to throw down field. Or either running back and over. Gain of 20 yards on the play by Terry Daniels. Yes. Knocked down by Luke. It's first and 10 at the 21. Good blocking. That's over Jay Williams' side and also Reggie Harper to the left. He went to the left that time. Jay Williams and Bill Marin. Our back didn't get much of a block there, but the, the, the fine blocking up front and Terry Daniels' good running. Bob okay. Harrison has done a fine job with our receivers. I tell you what, they've grown up so much. They've caught the ball more consistently. He hasn't working downfield, blocking downfield. That's an area of pride. 
This is Daniels. That's the block. Good cut. Good block. By, uh, Armstrong is in there right now. And carrying the ball down there is Terry Daniels. That was Carlton Armstrong. Yeah. Right. Walk-on football player from Nashville, Tennessee, Pearl High School, and uh, one of the favorites on this squad. Tennessee's got its first down and goal at the three-yard line. Back in there at tailback, Barry. This is Barry, and that's and the touchdown. Zone. That's where to go. That's more like it, offense. That's more like it. That was over Marin and uh, Williams and Harper and behind the blocking of Armstrong. James Barry headed right toward the end zone like a good back's supposed to. Duncan is in to attempt the extra point. <clears throat> The kick is up, and the kick is good. And so suddenly, Tennessee, with 52 seconds gone in the second half, leads by a score of 35 to nothing over Auburn. Unbelievable, uh, from my standpoint, you know, is we, we just played so well. And uh, again, like I said before, I'm sure Auburn was shocked, and I'm going to lose shocked some way to win one like that. It was one of those days I, uh, I must have the game. We just could do no wrong, honey. And, uh, when you're hot, you're hot. And when you're not, you're not. Sometimes you like to take a few of these good points and add them on a few other games that you may need a little more help. Tennessee leading 35 to nothing. The Pride of the Southland pep band was there. The band itself did not perform. There's the kick by Duncan, and it will be taken about six yards deep by Peoples. First and 10, Auburn at the 20-yard line. Great kick. Great kick. Thomas back at quarterback. Yeah, we have Castillo, I mean, excuse me. Yeah, we have Castillo and Cobra, two ends are sophomores. Uh, Chris Wampfer, sophomore left tackle, number 77. All three from East Tennessee. Get your hands up. Ah, missed tackle. Two missed tackles. Hip out. That's a fumble. Uh, don't like to second guess, but Fish has missed that call. We got the fumble. They, Auburn was penalized on the play. But we got the ball, and definitely was a fumble before the ball hit the ground. Illegal procedure. Five-yard penalty assessed against Auburn, and it will be first and 15 at the Auburn 15-yard line. You don't hear us grabbing about the fish eating here when we lose. Uh, I, don't, I don't think officials have cost us a game this year, not many through the past, I'll tell you that. Uh, they did a good job Saturday. That time it's Peoples for nine yards to the 24-yard line, knocked down by Wampler. Second and they, and they get your hands up, Chris. Ah, get him a little higher. Okay, Wampler, first man got to him. And they ran the ankle, but we got him. The second, third man up made the play. Third and 12. I like that little nose man in there, too, that noon, and I'll tell you one thing, you go to war with him, too. We'll be in a fox hole, which I hope we don't have to be. I'd like to be in there with him. <laughs> Brad White, they'll fight for you, brother. How are we doing? Get up, get your hands up, Chris. Contain, Chris. Get up there. Pass downfield, complete. That's Big Grisham who pulls it down the tight end. Gain of 17 yards to the 35. Bates makes the tackle, but Auburn has a first down. Yep. You know, you say, well, right now you think you're in good shape, and it'd be very difficult to lose the game, but you can't afford to let up and lose your stinger, you know, because it's hard to get your momentum back. That old word, momentum, you know. That was Franklin for whom the pass was intended, but the pass is incomplete, and it will be second down 10. Pass complete this time. That's Byron Franklin with right, speed. All right, fine. Lick there. Now, that was uh, Noonan and Bolton and Bradley. 60, 50, and 61. Uh, that was a hard lick. Gain of two yards, third, eight. Third down and eight. Auburn in the I formation. They've been shifting back and forth occasionally. They were split back. Yeah, we have our young, young lineman in there now. Good throw and catch. That was fine throw and catch. Gain of six, but it's short of the first by two yards, and it's fourth down upcoming. Good and Auburn. For, good coverage for Greg Gaines. Uh, as long as you stop him on fourth and two at midfield, there. good coverage for him. We have a young lineman in there right now. Jackson at nose man, Reggie White at left tackle, both freshmen at right tackle, Mark Studaway, who is a sophomore, and Charles Morgan, freshman defensive tackle. That was, oh, excuse me, in. That was Gall taking the fair catch, and so Tennessee has the ball at the volunteer 11 yard line. Alatori, I think, is in there at quarterback. Uh, Osheski. No, Osheski's still uh, there. Oh, break outside Glenn. Glenn's running a little bit insecurely. He's holding on the ball better and has a better blocking uh, running angle. But if he'd have broken outside there, we might have made about 10 or 15 more yards. This is Ford again. Ah, hit that ball quicker now, Glenn. Warren made the tackle. Gain of one on the play, and it'll be third and six. He just needs to keep running. As long as he's conscious of the football, he needs to run a little bit more confidence. But... First things first, he's got a hold of football. He's working on securing that. In two weeks now, he's done a better job with it. So in to punt on fourth down is John Warren of Tennessee. Standing back deep, and there you see 10 men put, ready to rush for put the pressure on us. Fine protection. The debris on the field again, you see a lot of oranges showered in our direction. Uh, and the Auburn people tried to curtail it more. I will mention this. I told our players all week, I said, look, oranges thrown at you can't win football games or lose them. Fans can't win them. Where they can support the heck out of you like ours do. 
and coaches can't win in front, but we can prepare you. Out of Ohio, Danny Martin, second man up, Spradlin. The Danny's. Uh, coaches can't win them for you, but we can prepare you. Fans can support you. Oranges can't win them or lose them. Contained uh, young fellow, freshman Charles Norman. Had a good tackle. Complete to <laughs> Sullivan to Atkins. Tackle made Bill by Bates. Bates. Good tackle, Bill. American High School. East Tennessee, now coached by Danny Bland, a young man I recruited at Mississippi State uh, from West Tennessee. Went on to the fine job there, now he's a fine high school coach. Bill played uh, <clears throat> before he got there. There's the pass by Sullivan, and this one is complete to Franklin for eight yards, and Auburn is moving with that football. Good tackle by Greg Gaines. Second down, two at the volunteer 33-yard line. There's a players win football games on the other side they're talking about, and you guys got to believe that you can do it. You got to believe in yourselves and go out and execute. Our football team was ready to play. Sullivan. Hands up. He's going to get hands up more. Get hands up more. That's Edwards who's pulling it down, and Auburn is moving. They yeah, have they the are. ball first and 10 at the Tennessee 19-yard well, line. We've got no business losing the ball game here, but still you don't like to see this happen, but it's going to happen sometimes. Uh, but we had five people around the ball that last time after he caught it. This is Brooks. He's hit. Fumbles that football. There's the scramble. And we come up with it. See Mike Cover pointing to it. You can identify some of the players. 93 is Cover. Got a few so-called officials out there wearing orange and white. <laughs> as long as they're attackers, as long as they're pursuers, I'll let them do that. Still on scrambling. There's 50 for Auburn. And at the bottom of the heap, when everybody gets up, who's got the ball? Number 77, Chris Wampler. Chris Wampler. You know, our pursuits improved so much this, this year, John. You know, uh, I've heard you, you've heard me tell about Coach Wyatt, our great football coach that we played for at Tennessee, that Bill Anderson and I played for, and Bill Johnson, Stockton Atkins, and some good football players. Oh, get up. Good job. Terry Daniels for six yards at the left side of the line, knocked down by Collier, second and four, Tennessee at the Tennessee 20. And a block by Barry. Ah, right, Glenn, a little more forward lead now. You're getting too high now, Glenn. Let's go now. You got a lot of speed. He's uh, playing with a little more uh, confidence, but he's got to run a little harder and a little more lean. Oshevsky, complete Barry, juggling, but holding on to that football for another 13 yard gain. And a block downfield by Hancock. Good effort. Coach White used to call pursuit. Uh, his definition was there's 11 people arriving at the ball at the same time in a bad state of humor. <laughs> Ford at right tackle got a yard to the 39. It's going to be second down and nine. Oshetsky, Stunt, on this Hancock, time. Just a little low, took it on the skip, pass incomplete. Well, we had some pressure there that we, they put the linebackers blitzing on us. Third Did down it come nine. again? They blitz the linebackers again. Oh, 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 oh. One ball recovered by Auburn. That's up the six, I'll show you. We have two linebackers blitzing. And they couldn't the come. I believe that's the only turnover of the day. A bad place to turn it over, but still, that's much improvement. First and 10 Auburn at the Volunteer 30. Tennessee leading in the football game, 35 to nothing. Now Thomas. The, de the defense is back in there virtually where they were before. 92, Reggie White. Reggie White, first line. Chattanooga, Tennessee. That's my wife's hometown. We spent a lot of time traveling that road back and forth to Knoxville, Chattanooga. Thomas, the quarterback. Franklin is the split end. Coach Bobby Jackson spent some time back and forth to recruit Reggie White. Pass Charles incomplete. Morgan. Seven is Wilbur Jones. That's Gaines back there with him. Pass intended for Franklin. It's got to be third and ten at the 30. Auburn with the football trailing. This is Thomas getting some get pressure. Get your hands up. No, get your hands up. That's more like it. Reggie White again. Reggie White. That's more Reggie. Uh, big young man, 6'5", about 250. Of course, they played for a former volunteer, too. He and Charles Morgan did uh, Robert Pulliam. Find a Howard, High, Howard High School in Chattanooga. Roberts from Salisbury, North Carolina. Hands up. Thomas, the pass is... Better. Almost intercepted by Wilbert Jones, but tackled by Bill Bates. And it is short of the first down. So Tennessee will be taking over as the third period is coming to a close. That was good uh, defense. Uh, he was the first man rushing the pass. But anyway, it was good tackle and almost intercepted. You know, when you stop them there on fourth down, that's all you want. So at the end of three quarters, the score, Tennessee 35, Auburn nothing. Back in just one minute. Tennessee leads Auburn by a score of 35 to nothing as we're set to go in the final period of the game at Auburn, Alabama. The Volunteers, as you see, you know, coming to the line of scrimmage. I want to talk to you about the script you've been writing. I think you ought to write scripts more like this than some of those you've done the past few years. Uh, it's more fun to do this thing when we win. I want to talk to you and Ernie Robinson. I think your script will get better. Terry Daniels carrying the ball at the left side. And there's a face mask. 
against Auburn, 15-yard penalty, and certainly helpful. First and 10 now for Tennessee at the volunteer 37-yard line in the fourth period of the game. That was a script I'm interested in is winning. Alatori, hand up field, up field, Anthony. Protect yourself. And the ball. Not bad, not bad. Shove back. Actually, a loss of a yard on the play, and it'll oh. be second and 11. Alatori with a long, long pass, and it's incomplete intended for golf. Get the ball out there with those pass receivers. You've got to get it out in front of them. Three. Third and 11. Third and 11 at the 36. Quarterback is Steve Alatori, a junior. Steve's dead. He's came all the way. Uh -uh. Too much penetration now. And then across the way, you see a little scuffle, and Tennessee is going to get a 15 I don't know about that. You know, face uh, mask. Guy came in and hit me in there late, and he kind of swung him off of him. There's no place for any of that, but that, I can see why that might have happened there. I don't know. In the game, I was very upset about it. I told Bill to watch his poise. You can't let have 15-yard penalties like it. Pursue. A little bit soft on recovery, but not bad. That was tackle. Wilkes taking the punt by Warren. Who made the tackle? That's Mike Coper. That's uh, who it was. Mike, uh, offensive Coper. That's who it was. This is people. All right, good tackle. Good Stutt tackle. away, I think. That was Mark Stutterway, sophomore from Memphis. On the stop, second down and seven at the Auburn 47-yard line. Tennessee leading 35 to nothing. This is Thomas. Here's the pass. That will be catching the ball this time. Clinton. Yeah, well, Mark Stutterway played for 95 men over there. Lynn Rogers, south side Memphis, Tennessee, too. I'll tell you, good young man. Third down, four. High jump, six, eight in high school and track. Get to him. Well, Jackson like is it. there, and I think Morgan. 83, 83 is Morgan. Charles Morgan was a fine football player and also a high school basketball player. Howard had a real fine basketball team last year. Reggie White and Morgan both played on. Morgan played three or four positions. He played quarterback, he played quarterback, some played linebacker. Fourth and four, and Auburn down by 35 to nothing is going to go for the first down. The ball's at midfield. Fourth period, Tennessee jumping around coming on defense. Coming after him, coming after him. Here's Sullivan's pass. It is incomplete. It was intended out there for Grisham, 86. The pass incomplete, so Tennessee will take over at midfield. Good play. Auburn went for it twice on fourth down late in the game, and we stopped him. At quarterback for Tennessee, Steve Alatori. Oh, reverse play. Go on, guards. Go, guards. Stay behind him, Willie. I don't know, blame him. He can stay that side might have made some I don't see why a young man with a speed like that hits toward that play line. Uh -huh. Reverse play. Uh, Alator's father has made four straight virtually transcontinental flights from California to Los Angeles. Hey, good running, Glenn. Glenn Ford for five yards. It's got to be second and five He's after the 13-yard gallop by Galt on the first down. You must have a good budget. <laughs> That's great. Good. All right, Glenn. Good blocking on the corner. I believe that was uh, a freshman fullback blocking for us. Phillips. Let's see. No, no, no. Carlin Armstrong, number 38. A junior from Nashville, Pearl, blocking for Glenn Ford from North Carolina. Ford for 16 yards, and Tennessee's got it first and 10 of the 16, and Black here's Ford again. And we've got some young linemen in there right now. David James, left guard. We have Roy Cunningham, right tackle. Ford again, this time gets two down to the 11-yard line. It's going to be third down five. A little thin at center. Uh, Rumsey got hurt and used his practice. Alatori oh, yeah, touched all that football. Touchdown. Mike Cooper. Well, Mike, put that left hand on it. His left hand, he caught the ball, took it on his left run, and scored. Good protection, fine fourth by Alatori. I want to say something to Jack Jolly, another walk on, who stepped in there and took Rumsey's place, snapped on extra points, snapped on punts, and was just did an excellent job. I'll tell you what, what a fine senior that young man is. So there's the extra point by Alan Duncan, and there's the scoring in the football game that finds Tennessee winning by a score of 42 to nothing over Auburn. We'll go to the dressing room and visit with the volunteers in just one minute. Tennessee wins over Auburn by a score of 42 to nothing. Bob Kessling is ready to visit with the volunteers. Let's go to him right now. Field here at Jordan-Hare Stadium with us is Bill Marin, now offensive guard from Saddlebrook, New Jersey. Bill, I guess the victory over Auburn was an awfully sweet. The offensive line played very well. Yeah, we uh, we come together this week, uh, the best we've ever played this this year. And uh, probably one of the best times we played in two years, next to maybe Kentucky and Notre Dame last year. The defense did a did a hell of a job last uh, the first half and uh, come and gave us the ball in good field position. We kept them off the field and uh, we just got together and everything went together this week. And we we came down with a good attitude and ready to play. The Tennessee offensive line seemed to blow Auburn back all day long. Well, uh, I don't know if we blowed them off the ball. I'd have to watch a film on that. Uh, we did a lot of good things. At times we got in trouble once or twice where we broke down on pass protection, but in general we did a we did a real fine job on uh, 
line blocking, and it opened up our outside game and our passing lanes, and uh, we, that was our game plan, and we executed like we should. Defensive end Mike Castile from Maryville, Tennessee now with us. Mike, today a shutout for the defense, and that's got to make everybody happy. Oh, that makes the defense especially happy because, you know, we set a goal first of the year that we want to be the, the less scored defense in the conference, and uh, getting that big goose egg on the scoreboard today means a whole lot. You did a good <clears> job of containing James Brooks, and that was one of the key game plans. Yeah, we uh, we have to get him inside, you know, so our inside men can come in and pursue and, and make big plays, and uh, we did that today. This is running back Terry Daniels, the volunteers from Miami, Florida, who for the first time against Auburn in his career at Tennessee, went over the 100-yard mark rushing. Terry, congratulations. It seemed like the offensive line was doing a great job for you. They did a tremendous job. They blew everybody off the line. You know, first strain, second strain, fullback, they did a job of blocking on sweeps. They did a great job of running, you know. The offensive line, they just did a great job. Terry, it seemed like the offensive line was pushing Auburn back a little bit, then you were just waiting for the seams to open up and then made the quick cut. That's all it is, really, you know. They, um, what they're doing, just blowing the guys off the line. It was up to us, you know, to find the hole. We practice, you know, running toward what the hole is going to be, but then again, you know, you can't depend on it to be there. But, um, you know, you ever think about it, no matter where you run on that right side, it's going to be a hole somewhere, right or left. But they did a great job of blocking. Tight end Reggie Harper from Hartsville, Tennessee, now with us. Reggie, today, congratulations. Fine effort overall, offense and defense. Well, it was. Um, our defense they did a tremendous job, and uh, our offense finally got some things going for themselves. Really. Reggie, you've been having some knee problems, but it didn't seem to bother you today much. Well, um, Dr. Yeoman did a real fine job, and uh, Tim Tim Karen has uh, worked with me real hard in, in rebuilding the leg, and um, they let me play a little bit last week, and uh, then they turned me loose this week. Tremendous catch you had, the one-handed grab down in the end zone. That was just one of those lucky catches. Uh, over a long period of time, being a receiver, you make a few of them, you know. Tennessee a win over Auburn, 42 to nothing. The Volunteers have next week off. Then in two weeks, they play against Georgia Tech in Atlanta. This is Bob Kessling reporting from Auburn, Alabama. We'll have final words from Coach Johnny Majors in just one minute. Something down. Practice like you play. Practice like you play. We've always said you practice with enthusiasm, you will play with enthusiasm. I felt strongly that we had the best four practice days we've had back-to-back. -back. Our team has practiced better all year long. We haven't played a bad game. You know, last week we won. It wasn't the fanciest win in the world, but it's good to have to win one like that sometimes. And we had an 89-yard drive to win the game last week. To solve it the way we started off with an 89-yard drive this week to start the game correctly. Uh, you practice like you play. Both of our quarterbacks practiced well. Either one of them could have started. We had confidence in. Jeff did a very fine job. Now, open date recruiting in Georgia Tech. Till next week, John Ward for Coach Johnny Major saying so long, everyone.